Que, welcome and bienvenue to the 2021 Powwow Pitch Quebec semifinals, presented by RBC, Shopify, and Facebook. Sunshine Tanasco and Indigenous Cause, and I am the founder of Powwow Pitch. I will be your host for tonight's Powwow Pitch Quebec semifinals, where Indigenous entrepreneurs from across Quebec will pitch for their chance to advance to the finals and win $50,000 in cash prizes to help them to start up and scale up their businesses. Thank you for joining us. Seven years ago today, I started Powell Pitch with the vision of combining Indigenous culture and social innovation to create a platform to celebrate, showcase, and put the spotlight on Canada's Indigenous entrepreneurs. Over the years, Power Pitch has supported more than 500 Indigenous entrepreneurs to take their businesses to the next level. And this week, we will support 150 more. This year, we opened up Power Pitch to Indigenous entrepreneurs across Turtle Island and unveiled our new brand and a website at powerpitch.org. We also launched the Power Pitch podcast the Indigenous Startup Program, the Powell Pitch Mailer Box, and the Indigenous Entrepreneur Awards, and grew our community to more than 30,000. None of this would have been possible without the passionate investment, support, and employee volunteerism contributed by our sponsors and partners. Thank you and miigwech to our co-presenting sponsors, RBC, Shopify, and Facebook. To our silver sponsors, Business Development Bank of Canada, NACA, and Canada Post. To our seed sponsors, Export Development Canada, Square, CIRA, MyTax, Raven Indigenous Capital Partners, and Invest Ottawa. To our collaborating partners, Startup Canada, Raven Reads, Arctic, and Jelly Academy. And to our promotional partners. We are broadcasting from the MyTech studio in Ottawa, Ontario on unceded and unsurrendered Anishinaabe territory. This summer, 1,642 applications poured in from across Turtle Island from nations like the Salish, the Inuit, the Métis, the Cree, the Ojibwe, the Anishinaabe, the Mi'kmaq, and Navajo. We shortlisted the top entrepreneurs from each region and matched them with outstanding mentors in the lead up to this week's semifinals. Every night this week, you'll have the chance to watch the Power Pitch semifinalists pitch to our esteemed panels of judges as they compete for a place in the Power Pitch finals taking place on October 20th. Prizes include $500 for the winner of each region, a $500 People's Choice Prize, a $1,000 youth prize, a $3,000 alumni prize, $5,000 for third place, $10,000 for second place, and $25,000 for first place. In total, this year we will be awarding $50,000 in cash prizes. Each semifinalist has one minute for their pitch, followed by a two minute of Q&A by the judges. Judges are evaluating whether the entrepreneur has clearly communicated their product or service, their value proposition, and whether their planned pathway to sustainability and success, and whether they are convinced the entrepreneur will follow through. Join the conversation online tonight using the hashtag powwow pitch. You can also vote for your favorite entrepreneur to win the People's Choice Prize, which includes $500 and an express entry into the finals. Go to powwowpitch.org forward slash vote to submit your vote with one vote per person. Let's begin by meeting tonight's esteemed panel of judges. Joining us this evening is Katia Deschesneau, Directrice de Comps at RBC. Sébastien Grégoire, Merchant Education at Shopify. Benoit Roberge Valliers, Director of Development des Affaires at MyTex. Christine Silva, Senior Lead of Community and Underrepresented Entrepreneurs at Shopify. And Luke Mizchek, Director of Parcels and E-Commerce at Canada Post. Welcome, judges. 
This evening, pitchers will have the opportunity to present in French or English based on their preference. It's time to meet the Quebec semi-finalists. Let's get started. First up, we have Gavin DeConti, owner of Gavin DeConti Clean. Hey everyone, my name is Gavin DeConti. I am a young indigenous entrepreneur from Kitagon ZB, Quebec. I created DeConti Clean in 2014. DeConti Clean's annual sales are $53,000 on average. DeConti Clean offers a variety of different cleaning services, which includes the deep cleaning of office chairs and mattresses. DeConti Clean is a unique business in itself because we are 100% Indigenous owned and we are the only cleaning company in the area that professionally cleans office chairs and mattresses. If I were to win Powell Pitch, I would use the money to purchase more shampooing equipment as well as expanding my business. I would like to give back by providing more job opportunities for Indigenous youth and providing a complimentary cleaning service for those in need. Thank you. Hi, Gavin. Uh, thank you for the pitch. I was just curious, how long have you been in business? I've been in business since 2014, but I, uh, this is only my second year being full time. My business first started as I was in high school and it led me throughout all the years that I've had in uh, taking on college. Um, so yeah, I've only been open two years full time, but the rest has been part time. I'm kind of curious because it's, it's probably very relevant. Like how has the pandemic uh, affected your business? At first, it was it affected my business kind of bad because everything was shut down and I had a loss of contracts and stuff. But within the, the past few months, I've actually grown more than I have last year. Um, I think it's because everybody's wanting to get their stuff clean because of COVID and not only because of that, because everything has been shut down for quite some time now, but now we are back in business. We were, we are able to, uh, get all the contracts and get all the personal jobs that we have to get done complete. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, Gavin. Thanks for the pitch. Hi. Um, I was wondering, can you tell us about your, your team a little bit? How many employees do you have in your, your company? Currently, I have one full-time employee, and then aside from that, I have one part-time employee, aside from myself. All right, and if you expand your, your services, uh, do you want to take more employees in? Yes, I would, actually. Uh, that's the whole, purchase, uh, the whole purpose of me uh, wanting to purchase more equipment is because I'm getting a lot of calls and a lot of um, uh, contract work, but I don't have enough workers at the moment to, to be going from place to place because during the day I have one worker that uh, focuses on the interior of vehicles. Then during the day I go to do personal jobs, which would be going, oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Nice to see you down, Gavin. Next, we have Wayne McKenzie, founder of Pibon Ijitawin Foundation. Hi, morning. Pibon Ijitawin uh, is a nonprofit registered uh, organization. Um, the organization is uh, to bring uh, probably inner city native youth and adults to. Uh, to things across uh, the country, uh, can't afford uh, a, a weekend of uh, skiing and uh, you know inspirational, motivational speakers. Uh, are going to be like a, a hoop dancer, uh, a native comedian, and a keynote speaker that lives a dull free life. Um, so uh, it's it's to promote a healthy living as well. Like I started because I, I was uh, became a diabetic. I only started snowboarding about four years ago. That's when I became a diabetic. So it's like promoting a living lifestyle. And uh, yeah, that's it. Great. So a question for you. It sounds like there's yes. a lot of moving parts. Um, are there yes. other organizations or community groups that you're partnering with to put together the, um, the whole experience? 
no, this is first of its kind in Canada. I got the idea from, uh, there's a similar one in, in the United States it's called the Shred Foundation that they bring inner city native youth, native, uh, just uh, inner city uh, youth, I guess we can't afford a weekend, but uh, this one's going to offer more, uh, like I said, like with the speakers and present presenters there, you know, focused around uh, native uh, culture, our culture. I was just going to ask you a question about uh, how you're getting the word out about your about your foundation. How can people find out about your foundation and the great work that you're doing? Uh, really, I just uh, social media. Uh, you know, like on my Facebook, and uh, I, I did a little, little uh, pitch on it. Well, like the the pitch I, I submitted the powwow pitch on my uh, TikTok, and uh, that's lots of uh, 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 likes on it. There, not thousands yet. But uh, yeah, so uh, we're gonna be going uh, like full full on it there as soon as I can. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi Wayne, um, how often do you plan to like uh, run these events? Uh, the, the first I'm scheduling, I'd like to have at least seven events. It'd be like in Whistler, uh, about th three or two in uh, um, Banff. Uh, in uh Milan, like you know bring in toronto people ottawa montreal people and there's a uh, little massive for uh, halifax up next we have justine deshane chef and owner of justine cooks hi i'm justine i am a food and cultural ambassador and my business is called justine cooks as a food and cultural ambassador i like to use food as a vessel to teach about Anishinaabe culture and history. And I also like to talk about current um, issues and events happening on Turtle Island. Now, when I win Powwow Pitch, I'm going to use the money to buy better video, audio and, edit audio and editing equipment to make better content for my viewers and participants. I like to teach this stuff. I'm also going to be purchasing um, outdoor cooking equipment and gear and all that for people who are participating in on-site um, teachings and demos to have a better experience. Now, when I say I like to use food as a vessel, I mean, I feed you, I teach you, you eat and you enjoy. So me going to power pitch will take some time to listen to pitch. <laughs> Thanks, Justine. Thanks, um, <laughs> great pitch and great demo. Um, how did you come up with the, the idea of your company? actually so my um the name is actually is just my handle instagram and i feel like it was just building a following so i kept it that way um i was actually approached to do um just like cooking demos online by the local friendship center here and it just kind of snowballed from there like we were in the middle of like the lockdown and it was everyone was feeling kind of funky and it just kind of went from there and i've been getting insane amount of teaching gigs like uh, live in person and um, online. Okay, great. Thanks. Great, great pitch. Thank you. Um, so if you imagine a year from now, and if you've won this powwow pitch, what do you imagine um, this could be like? So I already see myself and I have it all planned out. I have, um, I'm actually trying to be in the process of getting a proposal for a whole kitchen studio also. <laughs> So I would like to do, uh, I'd like to have a whole catering because I also cater for large, large amounts of people, hundreds of people. And I'd like to have a catering um, kitchen and studio so I can cook, you know, cater from there and do uh, the live streams from there. And I'm hoping to get uh, sponsorships and monetization videos as well. Great pitch. Thank you for that. Um, curious to know, are you doing this all by yourself or do you have people helping you? Just a few words on, on people that are supporting you with this. Um, I've been, it's literally just me. Like I have um, friends who I do a series with called The Offering. So that's kind of, I'm also kind of included in there. So we have, we have that going on. Uh, they're called Rebels in the Kitchen. So we worked on that together. But this here, this online thing, this is, it's just me in my kitchen with my phone. <laughs> Great job. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Christiane Bernard, owner, Nutus Skincare and Cosmetics. 
Hi, my name is Christiane Bernard, and I am a Mi'kmaq from Gascobay, Quebec. I am the founder and owner of Intus Skincare and Cosmetics. Intus in my Mi'kmaq language means my daughter. She's the one who inspired me to create a sustainable, safe, organic, cruelty-free, and Mi'kmaq-inspired skincare line. In December 2020, we launched our first three skincare products. And in June 2021, we launched, we officially launched our website. So presently, I am the only full-time employee. I have about 15 years of experience in business development, and I was previously CEO. But I also employ two amazing Mi'kmaq women, one of which is completing her MBA, and she's actually helping me complete my uh, marketing strategy. So if we were to win this competition, what we would do with the funds is um, implement a marketing plan, do more research on traditional mm -hmm. medicine, and create more formula. Well, Alan, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Christian. Uh, great pitch, thank you. Um, my first question, so you mentioned that you have uh, 15 years of the, uh, business development. What's, what's your background in, in, in which uh, sector? I was an economic development officer for probably close to 10 years. I did some business consulting, writing business plans, and I was a CEO for uh, one of the companies, this was an energy company. Oh, sorry, I missed the, the last part, it cut off. Uh, I was a CEO for a corporation. One of the businesses was a clean energy company. We had okay. a partnership. <laughs> Great, thank you. You're welcome. Great pitch, thank you. Um, what have you learned about your customers and what do you think they're looking for? Uh, a lot of my customers are Indigenous or people who are very socially and environmentally conscious. So what I've learned about them, that it's very important for them that there is no chemicals, that it's really safe to formulate that we have and it's very gentle on the environment. Thank you. Excellent pitch. Uh, question for you. What is your top selling product? Right now, I have uh, an exfoliant, uh, powder exfoliant, uh, spray toner, and an eye cream because we, we just launched our first three products. I would say in between the, the powder exfoliant and the, the toner because they have seaweed in them, which is our traditional medicine, and it helps with the redness, bruising, irritation. So those two, I think, would be our top sellers. Great. Thank you. So great pitch. Uh, thank you. And I was just wondering, based off of the previous experience that you had and now what you're speaking to in, in your current company, it sounds like the environment is always something that you're thinking about. Is that at the core of your business? Yes, that's that. That's the core of my values. My my very first language was Mi'kmaq. I didn't know how to speak English, so I have a really uh, indigenous worldview. So everything that I do is aligned with my culture, my language, and who I am. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have David Ronald John Charette, founder of Lit Kids. What does it mean to be an ally for Indigenous people? In my experience, I have found understanding culture to be the utmost importance. Good morning, Ani. My name is David Charette, and I am the founder of Lit Kids. I'm excited to be here with you today on how we are making Indigenous culture more accessible to Canadians. Theatre forms an integral part of Indigenous practices and brings a tradition to the 1800s. Each kit provides an opportunity for the user to understand how to create beadwork, giving the opportunity to everyday Indigenous practices. With the materials provided, you can essentially create your own personalized pair of earrings. I'm happy to say I have received over 100 orders for lit kits, but I don't want to stop there. That is why I need your help. I plan to use the, the money provided in the competition to grow my supply chain and grow my online presence. Are you up for the challenge to make Indigenous culture more accessible to Canadians? Because I sure am. Thank you. Miigwech. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, I needed to breathe. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I just had to do it. Okay. Yay! Very well done. You did a great job. Um, a question for you. Who are you selling to? Is this to individuals? Is it to schools, community groups? And, and how are you going to expand that audience? Uh, so far, I have uh, Summer Solstice Powwow that, uh, that gave me 100 orders for lit kits. So I'm doing like Indigenous, I'm doing schools, I'm doing all over. Anybody who wants to bead, 
is my target audience. Hey, David, great pitch. Really well done. Uh, enjoyed Thank that thoroughly. You. Um, love to hear more uh, about um, your work and expanding your online presence, um, uh, your marketing plan, how you're looking to get the word out on you know, on, on lit kits. Um, I've, I've hired a, um, I've, I'm partnerships with uh, Go For It Deliveries in Ottawa. So they can handle my online presence and they like find out how, how to be on top of the Google searches, all that tech stuff that I don't really know how to do. So I just leave it to them and I want to hire them for sure. Good plan. Thank you. Thank you for the pitch. Uh, where would you like to see your business in five years, say? In five years, I plan to go more international, like overseas, I'm thinking, because I already have United States and I have Canada. So I have people in the United States and Canada right now, but I want to go like all over the world, introduce Indigenous meeting. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, I would like to know a little bit more about your team. Uh, do you have uh, employees, co-founders, uh, which that helps so you, uh, help you? Oh, yeah. So far, I have me and my partner. We do this at home, but I would like to hire a team of four people that can manufacture these lit kits in like a hundred a week. Uh, so I'm, I'm, my goal is for a hundred a week send those lit kits out to the fastest way to Canadians and Americans and whoever else would need that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great work. All right. Great work. Thank awesome. you very much. Awesome. I'm excited. Next, we have Charlie Gordon, co-founder and secretary treasurer of Topeak Arctic Circus Troupe. <laughs> Hello, my name is Charlie Gordon. I'm the co-founder of Dipicat. It's a non-profit organization based in Quebec. Um, we're a band of Inuit circus performers that wish to uh, be able to preserve and promote our identity and culture as Inuit. And um, yeah, we we produce and perform shows, and 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 in that we uh, have an idea for a show. Um, apply for funding but through grants and uh and once we receive our grants and have our funding um we essentially go through a plan of creation production and then touring and um through through in, in that sense we are a professional circus troupe and uh, that's how we create our, our sources of revenue is, is through creating and producing shows and also performing them. Hey, Charlie, thank you for that pitch. Uh, I'm just curious, like when it comes to finding an audience when you're touring, how do you go about doing that? Do you have a big uh, social media following or, or what are you doing in that, in that sense? Uh, for the time being, we have, um, Two social media accounts on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, we have a moderate amount of followers, but uh, mainly it's through um, our network. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Um, my question will be um, from the other circus out there in other company and troops. Uh, how would you, your company, just differentiate from the other circus out there? Um, our circus is very unique in the sense that we are, uh, all of our artists and members are in it and, uh, through our creation process, we really, um, press on storytelling, um, from our myths and legends and, and, and oral storytelling. And we just translate that on stage. And every time we perform a show, that's always been the highlight. Awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. If you think about um, a year from now, what do you hope um, you're doing in terms of anything different around shows, locations, who's in the troupe? Um, we would love to be able to perform our the show that we produced, uh, Dupi Tohak, uh, in Nunavik. That's, that's our goal right now. And that's where we see ourselves. Hey, Charlie, great pitch. Thank you for that. Um, love for you to share a key challenge that you're facing right now and how you're getting around that challenge to move your uh, your vision forward um 
it'd be crossing our fingers, hoping that we get the funding that we we need to uh, to be able to get the tour. Because creating a tour would just um, it's it's very cost uh, costly, especially in Nunavik because it's um, it's very expensive for flights. Yeah. Right. Thanks very much, Charlie. That was fantastic. Yes, thank, you. thank you. Next, we have Raphael Langeve, founder of Machichu Creations. Hey, my name is Raphael Langeve. I'm 22 years old. I'm a new mom and a proud Pequagumishquo from the community of Machichuyat. Ever since I was a little girl, I always dreamed about becoming a designer, and this year I decided to make my dream come true. My business is called Machichu Creation, and it offers unique clothing and accessories inspired by my First Nation heritage. Every collection showcases my unique and drawn patterns, as well as print-on-demand and handmade products. Uh, sharing about my culture is also an important part of my project, and I do it through my blog, workshops, and soon DIY boxes. For my first three months of operation, I made more than $10,000 in revenues. If I win $25,000, I will use it to hire a full-time employee in order to increase my inventory because I would like to sell to museum gift shop and to go on the power trail next summer. My goal is to reach as many people as I can to share my art and culture with Canada and the rest of the world. Finish comment now. <laughs> wow, super. Merci uh, beaucoup uh, pour ta présentation, Raphaël. C'est super. Uh, Euh, donc, tu mentionnais là, que tu avais commencé à, à faire de la vente il y a environ trois mois. Tu as déjà 10 000 de vente. Euh, euh, où est-ce que tu t'es fait connaître? Par où tu te fais connaître le plus présentement? Euh, c'est les médias sociaux. Donc, moi, j'ai commencé ma page Facebook là, en janvier en prévision que j'allais lancer euh, ma collection. Fait que j'ai créé une petite communauté qui me suit sur Facebook et sur Instagram. Je fais aussi là, quelques événements, là, mais euh, ça va être plus pour l'année prochaine. Super. Merci. Merci pour la présentation. Je vais juste te demander, je pense que tu as mentionné des boîtes DIY. Est-ce que tu pourrais mm-hmm. m'en parler un peu plus? Est-ce que c'est pour des bijoux ou, ou quelque chose comme ça? Oui, c'est ça. Ben moi, je veux vraiment euh, euh, partager ma culture le plus que je peux. Puis je pense que de montrer aux gens comment faire eux-mêmes ce genre de choses-là. Fait que ça risque d'être des, des projets assez simples, soit de faire des choses en perlage, mais aussi de mettre en valeur des matières euh, premières naturelles comme les piquants de porc épic ou d'autres choses comme ça. Là. Merci. Merci Raphaël, super pitch. Euh, je serais intéressé à savoir quelle, c'est, c'est quoi la variété de, de, de vos produits. Euh, ben en fait, au niveau des des, des, euh, des vêtements, est-ce que c'est vêtements féminins, vêtements pour hommes, c'est, c'est la variété. Hein, ça. Euh, je me concentre plus sur la mode féminine. Là. Je pense que juste déjà avec les femmes, on peut offrir une variété de produits. Fait que pour l'instant, j'ai des t-shirts, j'ai des jupes à ruban, j'ai des sacoches, j'ai des boucles d'oreilles, bracelets, etc. Fait que j'essaie de maintenir plus à la mode féminine pour garder la ligne directrice de, de ma compagnie. Merci beaucoup. Great pitch. Thank you for that. Um, do you have a major milestone coming up that you're hoping to achieve? Um, well, every month I try to reach my uh, sales goal, uh, but the next step I plan on buying a laser cutting machine to have some earrings that are laser cut that I will be able to sell to other Great, thank you so much. You fit so much into that pitch. Well done. Thank you so much. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Super. Next up, we have Noemi Boisclair, co-founder of Marie Fleur et Fils. Bonjour à tous. Je me présente Noemi, une jeune étudiante en gestion de commerce et copropriétaire de Marie Fleur et Fils. Marie Fleur et Fils, c'est quoi? Eh bien, nous sommes une sœur familiale qui offre des produits de plantes d'intérieur et des arrangements fleuraux. Nous avons aussi une gamme de services, dont des consultations et des ateliers d'éducation pour l'entretien des végétaux. Notre but, eh bien, c'est le bonheur, car nous croyons que l'être humain a besoin de la nature pour être heureux. Et comment on mesure ça, le bonheur? Eh bien, c'est avec la fidélisation de notre clientèle. Notre vision à court terme serait de terminer la construction de notre serre et installer un système de chauffage, un système d'irrigation et des panneaux solaires. On aimerait aussi augmenter nos ventes de 20% pour l'année 2022. 
Notre vision à long terme serait de faire l'acquisition d'une petite camionnette pour viser l'autosuffisance dans nos livraisons et dans notre système d'approvisionnement. On aimerait finalement faire l'acquisition de deux membres de notre communauté pour créer un impact social. Yeah. <rire> une, super, une super présentation, Noémie. Euh, dans le fond, c'est une entreprise qui existe depuis euh, combien d'années environ? Ça fait pas un an, on a commencé le 31 décembre 2020. OK, le 31 décembre 2020. Puis, si tu me Donc, permets, oui. je, vais, je vais seconder. Donc là, présentement, euh, au niveau du service de consultation que tu mentionnais, puis euh, en fait, tout ce qui est la vente, est-ce que tu fais vraiment juste du B2B ou tu as, as développé les plateformes web pour faire ça? J'ai un site web. Euh, actuellement, on a déjà commencé à grandir une clientèle qui est plus personnalisée. C'est des gens de notre communauté, mais c'est vraiment web euh, actuellement. Puis, on a aussi des points de vente. Trois euh, points de vente. <rire> Merci pour votre présentation, c'était vraiment bon. Euh, je me demandais, comment est-ce que vous planifiez de vous démarquer euh, entre les autres euh, vendeurs des plantes? Écoute-moi, nous, dans le fond, on offre un service, vraiment une proximité client-entreprise. Donc, vous pouvez bénéficier de conseils gratuits et ça, c'est rare quand tu vas acheter une plante, surtout, tu n'as pas vraiment une relation et nous, ce qu'on aime, c'est vraiment la relation client-entreprise. Merci. De rien. Merci Noémie pour euh, le pitch. Ma question, euh, euh, vous avez mentionné euh, rapidement là, dans une phrase euh, que vous voulez augmenter 20 de, euh, de 20% vos ventes. Est-ce que vous avez des mm -hmm. idées sur le comment? Oui, euh, dans le fond, la stratégie ou juste le montant? Juste quelques exemples là, euh, de, de stratégie en fait plus. Euh, premièrement, on veut faire une stratégie euh, d'écrémage, dans le fond, c'est vraiment de baisser les prix pour justement aller chercher une clientèle qui, ça va les attirer en tant que telle. Et aussi, on veut faire une stratégie de fidélisation, euh, soit par une carte de points ou euh, vraiment une stratégie marketing. Là. On est en train de, en processus. OK. Super. Merci. Merci à tous. Vraiment merci. beaucoup. Merci. Merci. <rire> merci. Merci, merci. merci pour votre présentation. Next, we have Jacques T. Watso, founder of Sagamite Watso. Quoi, Nimsiwi? My name is Jacques T. Watso, and I'm a member of the Odenac Abenaki First Nation in southern Quebec. My product is called the Sagamite Watso. It's a, it's a delicious soup from the culinary heritage of my nation. Here you have the best version of this Abenaki recipe. Sagamite Watso is a blend of nine varieties of beans, golden hominy corn, dehydrated vegetables, and a secret blend of spices. It's vacuum sealed. You just add all the ingredients to a boiling pot of water, and you let simmer for a few hours to enjoy the best indigenous soup that money can buy. Add some venison for an authentic taste. My goal by winning the powwow pitch is to bring down the cost of productions to ensure sustainable jobs for myself and for my fellow community members. My business is already in operation since last winter, and it's slowly but firmly taken off. My, with guidance of business leaders of my community, Sagamiti Watsu is promoting ancestral foods from First Nations kitchens. And I thank you very much. That's great. Great pitch. Thank you for that. I will definitely take a soup also. Um, how are people <laughs> finding you and what are your tactics for um, getting the word out? Well, I started off uh, in January and I got a Facebook page. I got a, I'm on Instagram and I also have a uh, Shopify boutique online and I do, uh, I go around and uh, sell my product and it's word of mouth and is getting uh, across. Great pitch, Jacques. Thank you for that. Um, curious to know if you thought a bit about uh, how to scale. Um, so if this takes off and I, and I hope it does, Um, how do you how do you scale um, to make more of your product? Uh, well, I just purchased some uh, filling machines, which will uh, accelerate the process of production because I was doing it uh, hand by hand with a with a scooper, but each ingredients. But now I got these new machines this week where you just press on a pedal and it fills a, the exact amount of per gram per uh, per, per bag, and I want to do it in chain that would, would accelerate the, the process of production. Amazing. Thank you.
Super, merci pour la présentation. Euh, c'est vraiment un concept intéressant. Est-ce que tu envisages de regarder pour euh, l'offrir dans, dans, dans des épiceries ou des marchés locaux ou tu vas continuer de développer davantage le côté web euh, avec ton produit? Euh, oui. Ben, oui, je veux développer aussi euh, avoir quelqu'un sur la route éventuellement pour euh, vendre dans les centres d'achat, les épiceries fines, les... Euh, les euh, les marchés publics, là, c'est beaucoup, c'est, c'est beaucoup de l'été, là. mais beaucoup dans les, le tourisme autochtone aussi, comme tourisme autochtone du Québec, il y a beaucoup de, de, d'entreprises qui seraient friands de recevoir ça. Avec la pandémie, ils ont été un petit peu f- froid à, à l'acheter parce qu'ils sont pris avec les inventaires des années passées, mais c'est d'aller de l'avant de, avec ça. Super, merci. Merci beaucoup pour euh, ta présentation, c'était super. Ouais, merci. Merci. Next, we have Taisha Hakchet, founder of Quayle. What does Indigenous sustainability and conservation look like? My name is Taisha Hackett, and I'm the owner and founder of Kiyi. We create small batch wild crafted bitters to connect people to a place through taste while also honoring living relationships to the land. As a herbalist with over seven years experience, I am passionate about raising awareness of botanicals and to promote the honorable harvest and to provide an alternative to commercial bitters. And that's why I'm here today to seek your support and to bring sustainable regenerative practices to the market. With the funding, I can hire the graphic designer that's going to set my product apart and is going to help me realize this vision. Who is ready to bring Indigenous sustainability to their community? Thank you. <laughs> great, uh, great pitch. Um, curious to hear a bit about where you are selling your product right now and where you aspire to sell it uh, moving forward. So we are pre launch and we are going to be targeting like B2B brick and mortar distilleries, online cocktail emporiums, and uh, Yes, <laughs> that's uh, so we haven't launched yet. I do have uh, intent to buy from a few distilleries. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Great pitch. I think you actually touched on one of the one of the things that I wanted to to ask you about, and uh, that comes to like standing out in, in comparison to other competitors. So, what is what are some of the things that you're thinking that you'll be able to do in order to differentiate your product and tell the story on on why someone should buy your bitters as opposed to someone else's? <laughs> Right. So um, I am merging my herbalism and foraging experience uh, to bring a bitters that's all local to show what is in our backyards and to hopefully bring an appreciation to all of the botanicals here and then create those relationships to, to the land. Thank you. Thank you for the pitch. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed that in your pitch, but um, can you clarify who are your customers? You mentioned B2B, but who are your customer exactly? So first year operations, first year operations, we're going to concentrate more like the at home mixology, um, like aficionados, distilleries, online cocktail emporiums. But the like the goal is to also merge the herbalism into the bitters because inherently bitters also have a lot of herbal support to help digestion is just trying to do like the low hanging fruit first and then work up to be able to include this product to also like a health product. Um, And then the whole overarching vision is to create indigenous led food forests. Up next, we have Anne-Marie Gros-Louis-Hull, owner of Sage Harmonies. My name is Eatse. I am a Huron Wenda singer songwriter and also co founder of Sage Harmonies, a new record label based in Montreal. We produce artists, promote them, and help them to manage their career, and we work hard to build a strong relationship with them. After launching the company in April, we had such an amazing response that we were not expecting that at all. With the help of Power Pitch and winning the big prize, we would mostly use the money and focus on everything around the recording, such as paying for studio time, music director, and sound engineer. Video tracking, promotion on social media would also be included in the budget. We want to make talents from all nations and all styles of music glow in the whole world. 
big ambitions, big projects, sure, but we are big dreamers and believers. We truly think that stage harmonies can make a difference. Equality and pure talent, isn't it what music is all about? Thank you so much for your time. Tell me. <laughs> Wow. Fantastic job, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much for that. Um, Thank you. You said you're, you're believers and dreamers. I, I'd love to uh, hear um, your longer term aspirations. If you were to fast forward like five, 10 years from now, where do you want to be at that time? Well, I definitely have my own career as a music artist, but definitely stage harmonies, if it would be different places in the, in the world with divisions, we would love that definitely. Great answer. Thank you. Thank you for the great pitch, Amelie. Um, I'm curious, how many uh, artists have you produced thus far? Well, we just launched a company in April, so we are working now with the artists for the music direction and artistic vision, their vision, our vision. But we have two artists signed, and in 24 hours, we had 20 artists writing to us. So over 20 artists. So we are just looking forward to go with other artists, but we're taking our time, honestly. We want to give the right amount of time with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Anne-Marie. Uh, thank, thank, thank you for your pitch. Uh, I'm a musician myself and uh, it was great, inspirational. Um, there are a lot of um, uh, labels out there. So how yeah. you plan to dis distinguish yourself from the other labels? I think as a music artist, I know exactly where the artists stand and we want to focus on transparency and honesty. Like we want to talk about music rights and royalties and everything that is not clear for them. So we want to focus on that really honesty. Thank you. Thank you. Great pitch. Um, and good to hear all the interest you've had. Any new skills you need to bring into the team and where do you think you'll find those? Uh, new skills, like new employers wait, or uh, new employees? Yeah. Or... Or it could be employees or new skills you might need to learn. Okay. Um, I, think, um, I think definitely the audio production because we're working in partnership with other music directors and people, sound, en sound engineer. But we, I would definitely want to take a, a step forward and do it myself eventually, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks for Thank such a great pitch. Much. Up next, we have Kelly McBride, founder of Wiesnin. Do you ever wonder what to make for supper those nights that the kids have activities? We Sin In wants to help busy families gather around the dinner table by offering ready-made meal kits and lunch options six days a week. Two main goals are to offer budget-friendly, healthy food that reflects my Algonquin culture and to employ those in recovery who need support in maintaining their healing journey. Previously a social service worker and addictions counselor, I've now combined my two passions, cooking and helping my people thrive. In November, I started to sell food out of my home and cater events part-time in my community, and since then have generated over 19K. In May, I started to build a customer base at the local farmer's market that grows weekly and have been generating three grand a month with only four hours of service per week. If I win the grand prize, all money will be invested in a portable unit that I'll use to service full time and start employing community members in recovery. Wow, well, thanks, Kelly. Fantastic pitch. Um, I have a thanks. question for you. Um, feedback from your, your clients and customers. What are you hearing about uh, the service that you're offering? I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I have a hard time keeping up. Um, I sell out at the farmer's market, and when I do lunch out of my home, I have people asking to put extra orders in and stuff, so uh, I'm getting some pretty positive remarks from my customers. That is something to brag about. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your pitch. It was great. I'm just curious, so in terms of how you source your customers, has it mostly been word of mouth and the farmer's market so far? So far, and Facebook. I've just started Instagram and TikTok, but I'm still learning. <laughs> and uh, sorry, is your plan also to offer like a delivery type service in the future? Yes, delivery or pickup. 
Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly, for your uh, your, your pitch. Uh, I was wondering, are you alone in your company right now? Do you t intend to bring in some employees? Or who are your team for now? Uh, right now, it's just me. Uh, because I lack so much space in my home, I can't really bring in extra people unless I'm doing large catering events. Then I do have some helpers that I can rely on in helping me out with that. All right. Thank you. Uh, great pitch. Um, do you have a particular goal or a next milestone you're hoping to achieve? Yes, to establish a unit, uh, kind of like the portable classrooms that I went to grade school in, and just have a kitchen out of that. And then once that's established, I'm hoping to have that done before Christmas, and then I move on to a food truck to be the first one in my area to spread the word. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for that pitch. Thank you for Thank your you. time, guys. Thank you very much. Thank Up next, we have Swanage Bertra, owner, Chef Swanage. Have you ever thought of the last indigenous food? As a proud Dene, I feel food is the catholicist to bring indigenous culture to the conversation of the culinary arts. Uplifting my community with food sovereignty, I want the youth to be self-sustaining with community with, while communicating their culture proudly. My business creates jobs for the First Nations and Inuit workforce. Chef Swanage is a catering service sharing culture and with over 60 clients of all types, including corporations, universities, city councils, and most importantly, the Aboriginal community of Montreal serving from 10 to 800 guests at a time. Even Justin Trudeau had the privilege of eating my food. I want to create a collective kitchen to in central Montreal, where the youth and everyone can come to learn and earn an education in the service industry as a chef, server, sous chef, <laughs> with traditional knowledge, therefore, the people of Montreal and Canada can taste our culture, our food, our pride. Now, what would you like to order from the chef's wedding? Thank you. <laughs> did it get fit in the one minute? Very well done. You did a great job. Um, uh, a question for you. A question for Thank you. you. Um, what's your feedback been like from customers? Like, what have you heard directly from them? And, and how are you finding this um, great group of people you've been selling to? Um, I have been doing this last seven years. So I have the same people coming back every year. Uh, people are super interested in Aboriginal food because they'd have no other place to order it from. Um, when I regroup within different Aboriginal communities, um, different, uh, let's say uh, I regroup at the city of Montreal and we're doing something for um, the first community. The food is culture and there's yeah, the, 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 they're just really happy and positive about eating Aboriginal food. <laughs> Great pitch. Thank you for that. Um, it sounds like you're finding success, which is fantastic. It sounds like you're growing. Um, how are you going to meet the, the demand um, as you start to scale and get, uh, and get bigger? Um, my idea is to always hire Aboriginal youth because I believe that mentoring our youth is going to be inclusive in pride in pride and culture and um, when we educate the youth that gives power to our people so um, Ma, as I grow bigger I plan on educating more um, of our, our youth in become working in the kitchen working in the service industry so that's my my goal super Merci beaucoup. Uh, très belle présentation. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Up next, we have Grace Marie Edwards, founder of Gitbu Logistics. 
Hi, my name is Grace Edwards. I'm 57 years old. I'm a member of Listigage Quebec. I am the founder of Gitbu Logistics, and I've been in transport for 39 years. I was let go last year due to COVID, so I decided to open my own company. I've been up and running officially since April 20th, and I've made over three, 230,000 in sales and about 23,000 in gross profit. Uh, with the winnings, I would like to hire um, some girls to help me in a call center to call for more customers. And so I would need laptop, computer, telephone, and I'd also like to hire my bookkeeper full-time because that's not as easy as I thought it was. Uh, I reached out to CCAB to try to get um, some other Indigenous companies, but they unfortunately only ship small packages. Uh, I ship one skid to truckloads mostly and we have a saying in transport that if you bought it a truck brought it so thank you <laughs> great pitch uh i also want to congratulate you on being resilient and finding a different way to make revenue uh, after being laid off that's amazing um so i was actually going to ask you when it when it comes to finding business how did you do that in, in the early days i imagine that was a bit trickier well, I've been in transport, like I said, 39 years. So I kind of have a bunch of clients who will follow me. And when I let them know I was leaving, they said, let me know if you start up or where you go and we'll come. And that's basically what's been happening. They've all been following me. And a couple of them had referred me to other companies. So in my downtime, I'm looking up other companies of the similar to the ones that I'm already shipping to. So I'm making lists and lists and lists for whoever I get in here to start calling. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Great pitch. Thank you. Um, so what makes your product or your service unique? How do you stand out from other uh, companies in, in logistics? Well, I believe because I give a personalized service where I came from, it was a very large company and they tend to split it all up. I do it from birth to death. And that's the way you develop relationships with people. And that's why I have my companies following me because they know I care. Great, thanks. Thank you. Great pitch. Um, what's been your biggest learning so far on this entrepreneurship journey? Bookkeeping? No, <laughs> um, my learning um, to believe in myself that I can do it. You know, I've been doing it for so long that it's like, finally do it for me. And, you know, women become successful over their fifties because they deal with their family first, their kids. And now it's time for me. So just to show me that I have this much courage to actually do this, this is big for me. <laughs> it's something, yeah. That's amazing, Grace. Thank you so much. Uh, we're out of time for questions, but I wanted to say thank you. You've clearly put a lot into that pitch and I uh, really appreciate it today. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very thank much. Bye-bye. Next up, we have Gracie Rat, founder and teacher at Akipedia. Hi, my name is Gracie Rat. I'm the Anishinaabe teacher in my community and I'm the bearer of uh, traditional knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> at, uh, I get many requests to do uh, hands-on activities, and I want to share my knowledge to the public. Um, I want to do, I want to um, document my work through uh, my traditional work through uh, ritual tours and develop a learning program uh, and activities in order to reach out to other First Nations and urban organizations. All learning will be hands-on and online. So <clears throat> with the potential f funding that I will receive, I will seek help to scale up, to start up and increase uh, sales and make the business sustainable. Great pitch, Gracie. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> would love for you to share. Take a deep breath. <laughs> would love for you to share uh, a key challenge or, or a barrier that you're facing right now in moving your company forward, and how you're getting around that uh, challenge. Um, the the financial part, financial challenge is uh, my my first one. Um, 
and to make my uh, business sustainable. Right. Um, having trouble finding, seeking professional help. So oh, that's the yeah, thank you. Okay. Hey, Gracie, I'm curious right now, is your business mostly centered on site, like in person? And if so, are you looking to maybe transition that and having a bit more of an online learning experience as well? Yes, it's only hands in person right now. So I want to move it uh, to online. Thank you. Um, thank you for your, for your pitch. Um, my question is around your, your, your team. Uh, do you have a, a team supporting you or a, a network that, ca that can help you to, with your challenge? Uh, that you just mentioned uh, in the previous questions. For now, I am trying to um, to network. I have I have a, a team that can. I have a team right now that I can work with. Uh, I just say that you know they made my biography and all that, and it's just uh, the financial part. They don't have that. It's. Uh, they did all my uh, they help with the biography and all that, and uh, just the financial part that I need, video editing and all that for me. So. Thank you, thank you. I hope I get thank it. you so much for your patience. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Melanie Paul, co-president of Akua Nature. Oui, euh, Mélanie Paul, femme de cœur, femme d'action. Aquanature, c'est une entreprise qui combine le savoir ancestral des Premières Nations avec la science d'aujourd'hui pour fabriquer des produits de santé naturelle. Aquanature a à cœur le développement de la communauté, la création d'emplois et la protection de la terre-mère. Euh, au cours de la dernière année, pour nous, c'est important de créer des ponts entre les Autochtones et les Alloctones. Donc, on a créé des boîtes découvertes culturelles qui nous permettent euh, aux gens de découvrir la culture autochtone en fabriquant l'artisanat, en dégustant des tisanes euh, par la purification, la, le rituel de purification également. Aquanature euh, a euh, développé euh, des liens avec plusieurs entreprises canadiennes. On souhaite euh, promouvoir nos boîtes pour le temps de Noël en gagnant le prix. Ça va nous permettre de faire plus de publicité, d'élargir euh, notre euh, distribution également, de créer d'autres boîtes pour créer du repeat business également. Donc, euh, Tinesh Kouniten, le bâton de la parole est à vous. <rire> Merci beaucoup, euh, Mélanie. Euh, très belle présentation. Euh, J'ai euh, euh, des petites questions, en fait. Au niveau de l'entreprise, euh, peut-être m'expliquer depuis quand euh, depuis quand elle existe, on a commencé où et on s'en va où, euh, dans, mettons, dans un moyen court terme. Là. OK. Bien, Aquanature existe depuis… Euh, la création s'est faite il y a deux ans, mais le démarrage officiel s'est fait, fait il y a un an. Euh, dans le fond, l'objectif, c'est vraiment de créer des produits euh, dans différents euh, marchés, cosmétiques, aliments fonctionnels, aliments fonctionnels, excusez-moi, et euh, nutraceutiques en, en prenant les plantes médicinales autochtones pour faire l'extraction de différentes molécules puis euh, pouvoir mettre ça dans différents produits. Tout ça appuyé et du savoir traditionnel et de la science aussi aujourd'hui. Mm. Ah, merci. Ah. Monsieur Mélanie, euh, merci pour la présentation. Je voulais juste laisser savoir, j'avais déjà vérifié votre, votre site web, puis euh, votre page Facebook, etc. Vos photos, vos vidéos sont géniales. Je voulais juste te laisser savoir. Euh, quels seraient tes plus gros défis euh, dans la prochaine année environ? Euh, ben, c'est vraiment, euh, je dirais, de, de fournir à la production là, parce que on vise vraiment euh, augmenter nos ventes de près de 70 pour la période des fêtes parce qu'on veut faire des boîtes, nos boîtes découvertes sont très prisés par les corporatifs, là, euh, des cadeaux corporatifs. Donc, on est déjà commencé à produire d'avance. Le, le défi, ça va être de livrer puis de vendre en peu de temps. Donc, en gagnant le concours puis en ayant les sous, ça va nous permettre de euh, une meilleure logistique, employer, euh, visibilité aussi là, pour euh, les entrepreneurs. Ouais. Excellent. Merci. Super. Merci. 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 Merci beaucoup. Up next, we have Anouk Saint-Onge, founder of Capitan Anouk. Well, 
je suis euh, femme capitaine Inno, première femme capitaine Inno de pêche en capitainerie. Et puis, euh, j'ai acquéri un noyau d'aran. Je commence à acquérir un noyau d'aran qui me vaut 200 000. Et, euh, oh mon Dieu, je, capable. je pêche pour la compagnie. Ça fait maintenant 18 ans que je pêche pour la même compagnie. Je veux me permettre d'avoir le permis de pêche Bruxin à Rhin, éventuellement le homard. Avec ma sixième année, je veux prouver aux femmes, aux jeunes filles et aux décrocheurs qu'on peut réaliser ses rêves quand on réalise quand on, quand on veut vraiment faire sa passion et ses, ses rêves. Puis avec l'argent que je pourrais gagner, je pourrais avoir euh, m'acheter un bateau de pêche et mes équipements de pêche. Je voudrais... Je suis grand-mère et une maman de deux filles et quatre petits-enfants, je voudrais vraiment... Allô? <rire> Bonne chance à tous. <rire> oh, Merci, à je suis très... Merci beaucoup pour ta présentation. Non, c'est oh. fait, c'est bon, on relaxe, on respire. Alors, merci à nous pour ta présentation. Donc, dans le fond... Euh, présentement, si je comprends bien, tu es déjà capitaine d'un bateau et là, c'est le démarrage de ta compagnie pour que tu aies ton propre bateau et tes propres permis de pêche. Tu es rendu à quelle étape présentement dans le processus? Je suis rendu, j'envoie mes papiers à, à la MAPAC, dans le fond. J'envoie des papiers de, de subvention à la MAPAC. Puis, euh, je suis rendu là. Là, je suis en train d'acquérir mon noyau, mais je n'ai pas l'argent pour euh, acheter mon bateau et mes équipements de pêche. Mais le noyau, okay, c'est... merci. OK. Non, le noyau, tu allais dire, c'est... Le noyau, le noyau d'orange, j'ai une chance de l'avoir. Il y a une personne qui a vendu son permis de, de pêche au crabe. Et ça, tu ne peux pas l'avoir tous comme, comme tu veux. Tu, ça, j'ai eu la chance de l'avoir parce qu'on m'a vu travailler fort dans le bateau. Et quand j'ai eu mon capitaine, il a pensé à moi pour que... Il a pensé à me vendre le noyau parce que ce n'est pas tout le monde qui peut l'acquérir. J'ai une chance Parfait. de l'avoir. Merci. Merci pour la présentation. Donc, je me demandais, euh, à part de l'argent, quels sont les plus gros défis que tu, tu prévois avoir dans la prochaine année? Euh, Est-ce que c'est est vraiment juste euh, le staffing ou les employés que tu vas, tu vas devoir aller chercher ou est-ce qu'il y a d'autres choses que tu prévois comme défis? Ben, je veux pouvoir euh, aller euh, partager à l'école pour que mon défi, c'est vraiment un métier non traditionnel, un métier de femme qui pêche. Fait que je voulais, j'aimerais pouvoir me promener aux écoles pour pouvoir prouver que j'ai, avec ma sixième année, que j'ai pu réussir à devenir capitaine aux jeunes femmes, aux femmes et aux décrocheurs. C'est ce que je voudrais vraiment démontrer ma passion que tout le monde, quand il peut, on peut. C'est ça. <rire> C'est le très bel objectif. Euh, je te souligne pour ça, puis très belle présentation. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Next up, we have Valerie Laroache, founder of Machichuiash. Sans réserve, des vêtements, des accessoires dans une même trajectoire. Se distinguer et s'habiller pour te garder enraciné, cohérent avec tes valeurs, s'adapter aux consommateurs. Sans réserve. Une qualité au Québec confectionnée, prix abordable, au développement durable. Sans réserve, une vitrine aux artistes pour démontrer leurs origines, uniques, éthiques, pas une boutique touristique, ni une culture folklorique, mais moderne et urbaine. Sans réserve, création, c'est ma passion, respect, c'est ma raison, notion de partage, c'est laisser un héritage. Sans réserve, sans cliché, sans image stéréotypée, mais pas sans une identité. Oui, moi c'est Valérie, je suis une Pécoagaminotis de Mastéa, je suis présentement en train de monter euh, mon plan d'affaires euh, pour lancer ma marque, euh, passant d'un statut d'artisan à celui d'entrepreneur, designer professionnel. Je suis déjà active en ligne et euh, une de mes créations s'est retrouvée dernièrement au euh, Festival Mode et Design de Montréal. Avec l'argent, euh, j'investirai principalement dans un plan marketing pour mieux connaître ma clientèle et faire l'achat de machinerie spécialisée. Donc, euh, je, serais, je serais intéressé à savoir euh, euh, un peu plus sur euh, votre équipe est -ce que, et le monde qui vous entoure pour supporter votre entreprise. Euh, ben, dans le fond, j'ai plusieurs mentors qui m'accompagnent euh, parce que je suis en démarrage d'entreprise. Euh, je vais chercher l'aide de plein de personnes. Euh, justement, là, je suis en formation pour monter mon plan d'affaires euh, avec quelqu'un, donc à m'aider à, à toutes les étapes. Euh, dont un peu à m'aider pour faire mon pitch pour le concours aussi. 
Super, merci beaucoup. Um, merci pour ta présentation, Valérie. Euh, dans le fond, euh, là, présentement, tu disais que tu avais le statut d'artisan. Qu'est-ce que ça implique concrètement de pouvoir avoir ta marque? Des, euh, qu'est-ce, c'est quoi les prochaines étapes? Tu es rendu où exactement par rapport à ça pour devenir designer? Euh, ben, dans le fond, je viens de finir euh, mon cours en design de mode. Euh, ça a duré trois ans. Tu peux voir un peu les créations que j'ai fait euh, derrière moi puis euh, sur moi. Euh, fait que c'est ça. Puis j'ai, j'ai, eu, euh, j'ai participé à plein de concours euh, de mode. Euh, j'ai fait aussi le festival mode et design euh, la fin de semaine dernière. Il y avait une de mes créations qui défilait, donc euh, c'est quelque chose qui me rend vraiment fière. Puis euh, de passer d'artisane à vraiment une professionnelle, euh, c'est un rêve pour moi de, de faire ça puis de pouvoir euh, prendre, osciller entre le, la modernité puis le traditionnel de mes créations. Super, merci. Merci pour le pitch. Donc, je me demandais, euh, en ce moment, est-ce que la prochaine étape, ça serait vraiment juste de mettre les créations en ligne puis les vendre au, au public général ou est-ce que vous planifiez plus d'aller euh, sur mesure avec les designs? Euh, c'est sûr que je veux faire euh, je veux faire des collections, euh, deux collections dans la prochaine année. Euh, vu que je suis en démarrage, pour pas y aller trop vite parce que je veux vraiment miser euh, sur la recherche, sur la clientèle et tout sur un bon plan marketing pour euh, pour partir sur une base euh, solide donc euh, mais c'est sûr que je vais faire du sur mesure puis je veux euh, encourager euh, l'achat local puis euh, le, le, la main d'œuvre locale aussi quand je vais être rendu là, là. excellent merci beaucoup merci très bon pitch <rire> merci next we have Samantha Tenasco partner at Chinabe Mechanics Hey, my name is Samantha Tenasco, and I'm representing Chinabe Mechanics, which is a uh, small engines uh, technician in James, Norway. We're an upstart business in Kitagon, ZB, Anishinaabe. James is from the Algonquins of Barrier Lake. I'm a business development officer, and I'm also the pitcher here today. Um, so what we're here for with Powell Pitch is to um, see our garage project completion. Uh, with the $25,000, we would need a, an electrical plan, an HVAC plan, Specialized equipment and tools, marketing uh, plan, uh, technical software upgrade, welcoming center, and the construction of a steel garage that we already have on property. Um, we're a trilingual service. We've outgrown our business plan. We're traditional on the land trade barter. We increase um, uh, education for uh, young people in the trades, and we want to increase revenue, sales, profitability. Miigwech. Thank you for that pitch, Sam. Um, so I'm just curious, when it comes to uh, the mechanics part, do you do everything on site or do you also go out to your clients? That's the thing about Chinabe Mechanics is that we started as a mobile mechanic service and we're now trying to solidify a garage in our community, in our home. We own the property. We started the garage. We have the cement plan going. Uh, we're just looking to complete the garage, fill the interior of the garage, and Um, really get get a solidified base here in Kitagon ZB. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Samatha. Great pitch. Thank- um, you mentioned what you would do with the pr- the price money. Uh, there were a lot. Of, uh, it was a long list. Uh, <laughs> do you have uh, some kind of priorities? Like, what's your top three? Um, priority is getting the garage running. Um, it would be the electrical plan, the HVAC plan, and the specialized equipment and tools. All right. Um, because uh, one, well, we need the electricity, the special voltage. Two, we need that HVAC for the safety, the the heating, cooling, the air ventilation. Re- absolutely required. Specialized equipment, lifts, uh, compact tools that would increase effectivity, efficiency, increasing sales, revenue. Um, getting um, diagnostics completed quicker, and it would uh, in- entail uh, us moving faster and then increasing productivity, more sales, more volume, more money. Wonderful. Thanks. Uh, you mentioned you've outgrown your initial business plan. What do you attribute your success to to date? Um, I think it's that we have a good relationship with a lot of networking suppliers. Um, the region understands that we're a small indigenous upstart and they're careful to support that. 
They want to see indigenous success. So they're uh, helping us in small ways, connecting us to different networks, saving us money here and there, and providing us with services. Great pitch. Thank you Great. so much. Thank you. Thanks, Samantha. Thank you, Thank you so much. Good pitch, guys. Up next, we have Melissa Lozo Wallace, president of Maya Clothing. Bonjour, je m'appelle Melissa Lozon Wallace. Je suis une inou de la communauté de Mastoyache et j'habite à la Tuque, en Mauricie. Je suis propriétaire de l'entreprise Maya Coding avec mon conjoint Alexis Harvey. Maya Coding est une entreprise de transformation fourrure. Donc, euh, tout ce qui est euh, mitaine, chapeau ou euh, la vente, la taxidermie, l'achat de fourrure, tout peut être fait chez Maya. Nous transformons aussi les manteaux de fourrure de nos clients afin de garder leur héritage familial en vie. Si nous gagnons 25 000 nous ferons en sorte que notre entreprise devienne plus environnementale et nous récupérerons tous les pots de bovins abandonnés au Québec afin que rien ne soit perdu et que tout, tout soit utilisé à sa juste valeur. Si nous sommes là aujourd'hui, c'est beaucoup à cause de notre famille, mais aussi à cause de nos partenaires qui sont devenus notre famille. Merci de votre écoute et nous espérons faire une différence avec vous dans notre entreprise. Merci. Ouais. Merci, euh, Mélissa. C'était parfait comme présentation. Euh, écoute, tu parles euh, comme projet là, de récupérer les peaux de bovins. J'imagine que toi et ton conjoint, vous travaillez en collaboration avec euh, d'autres gens. Euh, L'ampleur, la, la grosseur de, de votre entreprise. Oui, on Donc, travaille en tout. On travaille en fait avec la députée Marie-Louise Tardif, qui est députée de la Violette ici, euh, qui nous a mis en communication avec les, entre, les, les abattoirs de la Mauricie. Euh, puis, euh, il y a François-Philippe aussi, euh, qui est député euh, au Parlement, qui nous a mis avec des, euh, en communication avec des abattoirs un peu partout au Québec. Le projet est déjà enclenché, euh, mais c'est sûr que 25 000 permettrait en fait d'aller acheter euh, la chambre froide euh, qui nous manque en fait là, pour concrétiser le, le projet. Combien vous êtes d'employés dans l'entreprise? Euh, on est deux, moi et mon conjoint. OK, super. Good. Merci. Merci à Mais vous. Ça, merci Salut. pour votre présentation. Je me demandais, oui. euh, comment est-ce que vous vendez vos services en ce moment? Est-ce que c'est en ligne ou en personne ou les deux? Oui, on est en ligne sur notre site web, myaclothingfamily.com. Puis, on fait beaucoup de salons chasse et pêche aussi. Euh, puis, les gens directement là, à la tannerie. Parfait, merci. Merci à toi. Je me demandais, euh, bonjour Mélissa, je me demandais, euh, est-ce que vous avez, des, est-ce que vous connaissez un peu euh, les compétiteurs, est-ce qu'il y en a beaucoup, euh, qu'est-ce qui vous démarque par rapport à, euh, aux autres compagnies qui pourraient être dans la fourrure? En fait, présentement, c'est sûr que le métier, c'est un des plus vieux métiers du monde, mais le métier est vraiment en déclin dans sa popularité. Donc, on a la chance d'être euh, d'être peu. Donc, on se démarque beaucoup par le fait qu'on réussit à avoir la qualité euh, aussi bonne que les la, une grosse tannerie, en fait. Euh, on est allé vraiment chercher des experts pour nous aider. Notre mentor, Jeannot Grolo, a été tanneur pendant 45 ans. Malheureusement, il est maintenant décédé, mais il nous a légué aussi ses équipements. Donc, euh, on a, vraiment, on a vraiment eu cette chance d'avoir notre mentor. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci. Mais merci beaucoup. Merci, merci. beaucoup pour merci. ta présentation. Next up, we have Dave Vero, owner of Authentic Origin. Euh, bonjour, je suis Dave Vero, le propriétaire de chez Authentic Origin. Euh, C'est une boutique située à Saguenay, à la baie. Euh, moi, ici, je représente une douzaine d'artisans autochtones d'un peu partout dans le Québec. Euh, la mission de l'entreprise, c'est de faire connaître l'art et la culture autochtone euh, partout, euh, partout le plus possible. Euh, je suis toujours à la recherche d'artisans. Euh, mon but, euh, mon but, c'est de créer d'autres points de vente partout dans le Québec et dans le Canada. Euh, développer une boutique en ligne euh, de genre euh, Amazon. Euh, 100% autochtone et euh, la mission euh, la mission de, de l'entreprise dans le fond c'est unir toutes les nations dans un même endroit euh, et avec des artisans géniaux euh, et ça répond pas mal à ça voilà ça passe vite une minute super oui ça va vite 
Euh, très belle présentation, Dave. Merci. Euh, dans le fond, l'entreprise est déjà en opération depuis un certain temps, j'imagine. Peut-être m'expliquer un peu comment la, la pandémie vous a affecté, puis est-ce que c'est ça qui a motivé l'intérêt euh, d'aller vers une boutique en ligne? Euh, oui, exactement. C'est euh, la pandémie. Ici, à saint on reçoit les bateaux de croisière, les croisiéristes, euh, de partout dans le monde. La pandémie, elle nous a, nous a euh, coupé l'air de sous pied un petit peu. Donc, euh, j'ai décidé de, de plus m'impliquer en ligne. Euh, ça va très bien également. Euh, et euh, c'est ça, la pandémie a fait que j'ai moins, de, tour, euh, moins de, de, de clients ici en boutique. Merci. Merci pour la présentation. Donc, je me demandais comment est-ce que tu trouves tes artistes en ce moment? Euh, ben en fait, euh, avant la pandémie, on faisait beaucoup de, de power, on louait des kiosques, on rencontrait des artisans, euh, aussi sur les, les groupes Facebook euh, d'artisans autochtones à vendre. Euh, J'ai beaucoup d'artisans de, 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 qui m'approchent aussi pour qu'ils puissent vendre le, le produit à boutique. Euh, présentement, je travaille pour créer des espaces membres en ligne pour que les artisans puissent... Euh, euh, mettre le produit eux-mêmes en, en ligne. Parfait, merci. Merci Dave pour euh, euh, le pitch. Euh, vous avez mentionné dans votre pitch que vous voulez euh, créer 12 points de vente pour les artisans. Est-ce que vous avez une idée de où se situeraient ces points de vente-là? Euh, pas de, au, dans le territoire, mais plus dans, est-ce que c'est de, dans des euh, magasins, euh, des grandes surfaces, euh, etc. Est-ce que vous avez une idée? Ben, en fait, c'est euh, plusieurs points de vente. Euh, ça serait dans, dans les plus grosses villes là, comme Montréal, euh, Toronto, aller jusqu'à Vancouver aussi. Euh, et euh, ça serait peut-être des, des, des locaux que je joue. Et, euh, OK. Our final pitch of the evening is from Edith Hervieux, founder of services Thanatologic. Machtel Capatican. Quoi, je me présente, Edith Hervieux, et nous de la communauté de Pessamite. Je suis tanatopracteur de métier, dit Croque-Mort. Je veux implanter un service tanatologique écologique dans le but de pouvoir vendre et offrir des services funéraires tels que la vente de préarrangements, la vente de funérailles traditionnelles ou personnalisées, la location de la salle pour exposition, la tanatopraxie, l'utilisation de produits biodégradables et un service de crémation. Une des caractéristiques chez les Autochtones est que le deuil communautaire y est omniprésent et est axé sur la solidarité, la spiritualité et l'harmonie. Cette approche et ses valeurs seront mes forces. Je suis la seule à détenir un permis de tarotopraxie et il n'y a aucun compétiteur direct dans ma communauté. Je désire également m'implanter dans d'autres communautés. Cette bourse va me permettre de l'investir dans ce projet d'envergure, à la construction de l'entreprise et à l'achat de l'équipement. Alors, merci de croire en mon rêve et d'encourager l'entrepreneuriat des Premières Nations, de neige comme maintenant, et à mes Wow, well done, Quebec entrepreneurs. Congratulations on your amazing pitches this evening. The judges have scored, deliberated, and selected the top four entrepreneurs to advance to the finals. And now it is my pleasure to announce the four entrepreneurs from Quebec who received the highest scores and who will advance to the finals. And of the top four, who is the winner of the Quebec semifinals and will take home $500 tonight. The first three semifinalists selected to advance to the finals are Raphael Langevin, founder of Machichu Creations, Grace Marie Edwards, founder of Gitbu Logistics, and Kelly McBride, founder of Wiesman. And the winner of the Quebec Powwow Pitch semifinals taking home $500 tonight and advancing to the finals is Melanie Paul, co-president of Akua Nature. Congratulations, Melanie, Raphael, Kelly, and Grace for advancing onto the finals. Remember, you can still vote for your favorite entrepreneur to advance to the finals by voting in the People's Choice Award. Visit powwowpitch.org forward slash vote to vote now. Thank you judges for your support, excellent questions, and for selecting the top four to move forward to the finals. Please share your final reflections and thoughts on the Quebec semi-finalists. 
Euh, on a reçu, euh, on a entendu des pitches extraordinaires. Les gens ont des projets. C'est vraiment prometteur pour l'avenir. Des jeunes entrepreneurs, euh, c'était vraiment une très belle expérience. Euh, L'entrepreneuriat chez les Premières Nations, là, c est, c est, c est, ça fait beau à voir tout ce, que, tout ce qui se fait là, dans, les dernières, dans les derniers temps. I was just really blown away by the presentations and actually there's a lot of different products that I saw that I'm, I'm probably going to be purchasing tonight. So thank you so much for having me. Oui, euh, d'abord, euh, merci beaucoup pour les pitches. J'ai été impressionné par la créativité des pitches et euh, la variété des idées des, des, des compagnies du, du chapitre de Québec. Euh, et ça a été très, très, très in, in, inspirant. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Canada Post is very proud to be supporting uh, Powwow Pitch uh, again this year. A uh, very heartfelt thank you to all the entrepreneurs that took the time, invested the time in their pitches uh, this morning. Um, good luck and hope to see you in the final. Uh, on behalf of Shopify, I just want to say how unbelievably impressed I am with the entrepreneurs we heard from in the Quebec region. All of the pitches were so inspiring, great stories, and I have no, no doubt they'll inspire everyone else watching as well. So congratulations to all of you, and I look forward to hearing what's next for your businesses. Thank you, judges. Thank you to our presenting sponsors, RBC, Shopify, and Facebook. Our silver sponsors, the Business Development Bank of Canada, NACA, and Canada Post. Our seed sponsors, Export Development Canada, Square, CIRA, MyTax, Raven Indigenous Capital Partners, and Invest Ottawa. Our collaborating partners, Startup Canada, Raven Reads, Arctic, and Jelly Academy, and our promotional partners. Thank you to our mentors, volunteers, and judges for all of your support in bringing the 2021 Powwow Pitch online and across Turtle Island this evening. Thank you also to our executive producer, Victoria Lennox and Cyprian Shalankevich, our creative producer for bringing our vision to life. A huge congratulations to tonight's entrepreneurs for their passionate and compelling pitches. Thank you to all of our viewers tonight for cheering on indigenous entrepreneurs through Powwow Pitch. Let's keep the conversation going using the hashtag powwow pitch. Join us tomorrow evening for the Ontario semifinals and each evening this week from 6 p.m. Eastern time right here on powwowpitch.org to hear from all of our semifinalists and to share who you think should be selected for the powwow pitch finals. Until tomorrow, I'm your host, Sunshine Tanasco, signing off. Miigwech kipijai egnon gomenokshik. Hey, my baby.